Todd, I'm going to ask you a question. You still there? Like, where'd, I, I don't know that I know this. Where'd you go to school? I went to Cleveland Chiropractic College in Los Angeles. Good. So did you go through a formalized program on spinal injuries? Hell no. They didn't okay. teach us anything about that. Okay. No. Every doctor. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, I mean, none. Yeah. None. So every, every doctor out there, every chiropractor out there, has never had another, you can go to West, Life West, you have Dr. Dan Murphy, I think he's one of the top educators in the world, bar none. Um, he's going to do some injury education with you. But in no chiropractic college in the country, is there any standardized program on spinal injuries? Now, here's the kicker. There isn't one in any doctor of PT college in the country. There isn't anyone in any osteopathic college education in the country. And there's none in medical education either. So you have the most problematic condition. Spinal low back injury is the number one cause of chronic pain and disability. Lumbar pain, low back pain. Cervical injury is the fourth leading cause of chronic pain and disability. And it's also the sixth leading cause with headaches being the sixth leading cause. So you have the number one, number four, and number six leading cause caused by trauma and if i want to go back todd to like i, I have this textbook um and i'm kind of a junkie on some of this stuff i have 1915 textbook that said all subluxations were caused by trauma it's caused by contact with the body in its external environment it's never caused from within i know there's a whole lot of theories about within and hey negative emotions are going to cause and, us you know what? On, on the same note, Dr. Gonstead also very simply said subluxation is caused by trauma. Like it's caused by some sort of physical traumatic event. Correct. It's caused by trauma. So the foundation of the profession of chiropractic is trauma. The absolute foundation. Now, I think it's pretty ironic that it's not taught. Mm -hmm. Right? So you don't have any curriculum on injury. So when you say, what are the five ways that any doctor messes up a spinal injury case is by not understanding the injuries and there's only three of them i mean i know todd you know one of the things i like to think and uh, we're live on a podcast so i'm asking this question live we didn't prep for this but when i say hey there's only three injuries didn't that simplify it for you yeah totally yeah and and, I mean, and well it simplified it for me but also simplifies it when you go do a talk to attorneys or you talk to another practitioner you know oh my god so much, or even to a patient, you know what I mean? So a spine is bone and connective tissue. That's the makeup of a spine. It's bone and connective tissue. So if we say something is damaged or traumatized or injured, it has to be deranged. Uh, if a dog bites you, but there's no bite marks on your arm and you come screaming into a doctor's office saying, oh my God, oh my God, look at this bad dog bite. And the doctor looks at you and it's like, wow, I can't see any derangement of the skin, the muscle, nothing. Mm -hmm. it, it's like, okay, maybe you got a bit, but you certainly didn't get injured because in order to get injured, you have to derange something. If the spine is only two parts, connective tissue and bone, then derangement of a spine is either you broke it or you have connective tissue damage. The connective tissue damage is 220 specialized ligaments that hold all these joints and the vertebra together and mm -hmm. also hold the discs in alignment and you have 23 discs. So either damage the support ligaments, which cause excessive motion and spinal instability, or you damage the disc, which causes disc herniation. So I can take those three things, fracture, excessive motion, and disc herniation. And if that's not understood, reimbursement's going to be bad. Getting involved with attorneys that are cutting your bills are going to be bad. Patient communication is going to be not as good as it could be. Patient compliance can go out. So, so those are the three things then is fracture. Yep. Disc herniation. Yep. And excessive motion, excessive motion. So the support ligaments, when they're damaged, we pick that up in with excessive motion. And, and, and excessive motion is, is the one that people seem to know nothing about. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's the primary. So if you look like when, it, when an attorney, a disc herniation, if I go to Medscape right now, anybody that's on this on this podcast, Google search Medscape. Medscape's like the number one medical site in the world and say, 
what are the indications of a disc herniation? And it's going to say there's two basic indications, pain and radicular pain. Wow. It didn't say headaches. It didn't say radicular pro It didn't say uh, headaches, dizziness. It didn't say any of the post-concussive syndrome type symptoms. It didn't say any of the referral type symptoms, shoulder pain, arm, uh, shoulder pain, scapular pain, mid-back pain. It didn't say anything about any of those other symptoms, right? It just said pain and, ridic and, and, and uh, radicular pain. So if you look right there, if we're diagnosticians, right? If I walk in, Todd, to your place and I say, hey, I, I don't care you're a chiropractor. I say, hey, my chest is getting really tight. It feels really tight. When I go up five sets of stairs, I basically feel like I'm going to pass out. I get dizzy and my ankles have been swelling for the last month. They look like elephantitis. They're really swelling. Those are called symptoms. Now you're going to relate the symptom to a tissue or to a area of the body. Obviously, in that case, it's going to be heart. You're going to refer me out to a cardiologist. You're going to go, those are common symptoms of a heart condition. In the injury market, the majority of conditions are a common condition for the support ligaments and not the disc herniation. But yet everybody's drunk on the, one of the things that drives me the absolute craziest is when I say the chiropractic profession should be the leading profession in spinal injuries, it's also the profession that's easily led. Mm -hmm. So this idea that everything is a disc herniation. Oh my God, everything's a disc herniation. Where does that come from? It doesn't come from any medical education and it doesn't come from any good medical or chiropractic rationale. I can 1000% assure you of that. It comes from this idea that that's all an attorney knows. Mm -hmm. And so the attorneys want everyone to have an MRI. Now I'm not opposed to MRIs. It's the only way you can tell if there's a disc condition. But it's not designed to pick up damage to the main injury that's there, which is a support ligament injury that causes spinal instability. That's the one that has the majority of symptoms. That's the one. If a person has a disc herniation, Todd, and I, I know you already know this, the first thing I want to know is what are the support ligaments around that disc doing? I mean, are they tore up as well? I mean, let me lay another one on you, Todd, because this while we're on a row, you know, you, I can get out all my frustrations about the market in with with you on a podcast. <laughs> yeah. This is good therapy for me. Good. Like somehow a person's in an auto accident, right? And there's some smart bomb of energy. Ooh, it's it's it was an auto accident. There's a smart bomb of energy that just hits the disc and, and the disc happened. herniation. Yeah, how does that happen? How does that happen? It's impossible for that to happen. Right. Right. So one of the you, number one way is not knowing the injuries themselves and not doing a good workup for whatever injury is there. If you don't do that, your fun, your foundation of your claim is actually faulty. Mm -hmm. And that's going to allow people to cut your bills. It's going to allow you to cut your care. It's going to allow people to actually say you over treated. You shouldn't have done this. You shouldn't have done that. And it all comes from just not having, number one, the foundation of the injury. So you're working up whatever injury the patient has, and you're working that, that, that condition up. You know, having that knowledge builds a tremendous amount of confidence. And the confidence is what now allows you to not back down or be startled if an insurance adjuster or an attorney or someone else tries to challenge you because you realize they don't know what you know. There's a tremendous amount of information that you get from, 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 from diving in and trying to discover, is there a spinal ligament injury? Like something that comes to mind, and this was a case that you helped me with as well. My, my associate doctor, Dr. Zach, a patient of his that he saw, you probably remember this. It got a little messy. This was a, this was a story of basically the wrong attorney taking a case. And then we had a, we had of the patient, you know, well, that, that patient decided to then fire the attorney and get a different attorney. And the reason this poor girl, she had, she had significant injury. She had four levels of, of almost four millimeters of excessive translation motion in her neck, four levels in her neck, four, four millimeters plus. On right. Each Tora. Tora. Yeah. yeah. Awful. And her attorney who I talked to, and I was just trying to give it to him on a silver platter to be like, look, when the insurance company says 
there's nothing there and there's no problem and it's just a soft tissue injury. So it's an ice pick in your testicle, right? Is, uh, <laughs> yes. it, it, it is, uh, I said, do you understand what's going on with your client's injuries? The patient that we even referred to you for, for, for you to represent. I didn't realize you didn't know this stuff. Can I go through and explain this to you so you can better understand this? And I went through and I basically just, like I said, just spoon fed this person and, and, and explained it, talked about AMA guidelines, what this means, what this is going to mean for her future. And this guy was just unwilling to basically take that information and comprehend it. Instead, he said, well, I just talked to the insurance adjuster and they just said, cause there's only this much damage to the vehicle. And I'm like, you suck at your job, don't you? And so, and so essentially, essentially the patient, I, I, I relayed this to the patient. I said, here's what's going on with you. Your attorney is unwilling to take the information that we've, we've explained and being able to represent represent that to the insurance company. So your options are either continue to go the route that, that your attorney wants you to go. Um, you have every right to uh, talk to your attorney, see if they're going to do something otherwise, or you can get a different attorney. And so she, she, she got on with them, fired them. We took one of our other attorneys who actually attended back in the day when you came out in person and you did the presentation at our clinic for one of our impact events. Yeah. It was one of the law offices that came and attended. Yeah. You thought I was a little hard on him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but you know, whatever. Uh, uh, yeah, I know. I was like, Whoa, and I probably fun. was. And I probably was. <laughs> it was moment. funny. We had a, we had, we had, we had a handful of attorneys come attend. Dr. Kronk was doing a presentation for them at one of our impact events. It was a five day impact event that we did. It was like this massive, you know, we had chiropractors fly out. We phenomenal event. It, we had a video crew there filming it. We broadcast it. We had like 30 or 40 offices watching this online. And, and anyway, on a Friday night, we catered this event, had attorneys come in. Dr. Kronk's there does his presentation for the attorneys so that we could all see how he would speak to attorneys. And it was funny because it, it wasn't like, hey, everyone, come on in. It was like, it was like a drill sergeant. <laughs> and he's just going through and kind of putting them in their place and kind of, you know, stirring them up a little bit. And at first I'm thinking, oh man, he's being pretty harsh to these guys. But ultimately it 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 resulted in building trust and rapport and they had good conversations afterwards. And this is one of the attorneys that we've continued to work with that we took this patient who is being poorly represented by this other attorney. She fired the attorney, went to this other guy. This other guy at the end of the day took the information that we presented on the spinal ligament injuries, used that to confidently talk to the insurance company and said, no, no, this is, this is a major issue. Uh, and ultimately the patient was able to get benefits that they were, that they were rightfully entitled to. They got a much better settlement and, everything went well, minus the new attorney having to deal with the old attorney. That was interesting. He shared with me some of that communication. I was like, man, these attorneys are just brutal with each other. You know, I mean, just, yeah. just like F you and this and that. And I mean, writing nasty emails to each other and just trash talking. Uh, something else too, in that case, I'll just add is that something else that we did is I had the patient go do a consultation with a neurosurgeon who I know. And this neurosurgeon knows that we understand spinal ligament injury and instability. Just to make sure, I even pointed out to the surgeon, I showed them, I said, look, this is the actual textbook justification for a fusion surgery when there's instability. And that's something that I got from you, obviously, Dr. Kronk, and showed that to him. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And I said, and so here's how we measure this per the AMA guidelines. And here's Here's how much instability she's got going on. So he he does a consultation. This definitely helped because he documented that she's got massive instability. And at some point, she's likely going to need some sort of spinal fusion surgery. Now, we're not going to be sending her off for spinal fusion surgery because we're going to do conservative rehabilitation. But she does have a massive injury. Yes. The, way, the way neurosurgeons look at it, you know, they have their hammer. Everything's a nail. That's a perfect nail. But we have, I think, a better hammer to be able to fix a lot of this stuff, so it doesn't have to go to that drastic extreme. I'm, 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 I'm feeling, I'm feeling the therapy, man. I'm feeling the therapy already. Yeah, because you feel good, here's right? the thing. Yeah, no, yeah. because that, that's exactly what I'm saying, Todd. Is that look in the market today in the spinal injury market? Uh, one of the things I say is the blind are leading the blind. 
Right. Mm -hmm. The blind are leading the blind. But if you can see, you can lead the blind. And that's exactly what you did. You took, okay, some attorney goes, oh, wow. The insurance adjuster said what? What, you talking about the 23-year-old insurance adjuster that just got out of college that, you know, has been trying to figure out claims for the, you know, the last six months? And so one of the things that's interesting, and doctors, if you're in this market, you have to put up with this. The, the, the personal injury attorney market is the only lawyer market that does not study the condition that it represents now you got to let that sink in okay if i'm in, if todd and i are in a contract and i get injured with a contract i'm hiring a contract lawyer they spend their weekends they do ce they geek out on contract contract law how do you break contract what's the best language how do you counter that language they study everything there is to know about it right imagine going to a contract attorney that doesn't really study contracts Right. Imagine going to an asbestos attorney. Let's say a patient's got asbestos exposure and you go to the asbestos attorney and they, they've never studied asbestos. They've never studied where does it con congregate in the body? How do you test for it? How do comorbidities actually interact with it? What are the symptoms that the person sees with it? What are the standard workups for it? They didn't know any of that. Right. You go to a personal injury attorney today, and this is why we have a, we have a program called Smart Injury Lawyers Program, but and, and it's for training for attorneys and say, have you ever studied the injuries that you represent? And you're gonna, they're gonna say no. Thanks for watching this clip from the Move Now Chiropractor podcast. And be sure to join our free Facebook group, Functional Movement for Chiropractors, to learn more about how Move Now University can help you with your systems and your clinical practice. Be sure to watch our 30 minute pre recorded demo at demo.movenowu.com. Thanks for hanging out with us, and we'll see you on the next one.